1,823 days. That is how many days it has been since the moment I first summoned Frederick the first here in rise of kingdoms. This was my first ever legendary commander in the game and i got him three days after i started playing in fact i am recording this video on my five year anniversary for rise of kingdoms i started playing on october 25th 2018 so we are three days away from it taking me five years to expertise frederick the first 100 percent free to play now by that i mean i have never invested a universal legendary commander sculpture into frederick the first at least not to my knowledge if i did it was like my first week of playing and maybe it was like one or two sculptures i literally don't think i've invested a single universal into him and why would i because he's actually trash but i have spent money on the game which means i have accumulated probably more gold keys than your average free-to-play player over the past five years however there's also more ways to get gold keys keys in the game now than there were when I first started so really at this point we're splitting hairs but the moral of the story is that using only gold keys it took me five years for this moment right here and today we are finally going to unlock the expertise skill for Frederick the first and the timing of this actually couldn't have been better because with the introduction of Liu Che in rise of kingdoms Frederick actually i i know this this is i almost feel like i'm gonna throw up in my mouth saying this but frederick actually kind of has a use in the open field right now with luj I, I know i know i know it's, it's actually crazy to think about but but hear me out okay we're gonna go over this later in the video uh this was actually something that chiskel gaming first pointed out in his initial testing of Liu Che. They tested him with Frederick and they were kind of surprised at the results. And I think he kind of brushed over it and then moved on to some actual pairings that you would use with Liu Che, other infantry commanders. But people have been keeping their eye on Freddy with Liu Che. And we're going to talk about that in this video because there actually might be a use for Frederick in 2023 five years after he came into the game and that's exactly how long it's taken me to actually expertise him but first what's going on guys cheers this is my second cup of coffee for the day this is it i can't believe i'm finally going to expertise my first ever legendary commander in rise of kingdoms last night on my live stream i opened 20 gold keys and i got five sculptures of freddy of course if you missed that live stream you're probably not subscribed so consider subscribing to the channel below if you want to watch more rise of kingdoms content and not miss my live streams but this morning I woke up and I finished doing my daily quests and opened the gold key and I summoned a full copy of Frederick the first and that pushed me to 83 total sculptures which means right now is the moment that I have been waiting for we finally got that last skill to five and we officially unlocked the expertise skill from Frederick the first furious Barbarossa now of course the expertise on Frederick is an enhancement of his active skill and now it reads that for the next three seconds each attack has a 100 percent chance to deal extra damage to the target with a damage factor of 800 now this is honestly a really high single target damage I mean over the course of three seconds we're talking about 2000 400 single target damage now this isn't as good as instant proccing 2400 obviously right if you look at somebody like Tarek, for example he instant procs 2200 if he's expertise he instant procs 2500 i think that that is much better than having to wait three seconds to get the maximum value out of this skill but when you consider the fact that he's been in the game since the very beginning the skill damage on a single target from Freddy is actually still one of the highest in the game, which is shocking. Now, of course, we also have Sargon, for example, who does 500 damage factor over five seconds. So it's total more damage, but you have to stay connected for a much longer amount of time. So really interesting mechanic here on Frederick. The single target damage is through the roof, but the rest of his kit is where he's fallen short historically. And we're going to go over all of the skills, the talents, the museum and everything, the relic. And then later in the video, we're going to talk about the pairing with Liu Che, which I think is the only thing that you should even consider with Frederick at this point in 2023. But the second skill here is also interesting. We have a 10% chance of a 1000 healing factor. 
and this can trigger once every five seconds so this means that let's say your skill goes off every 10 seconds right which is a little bit slow it's usually going to go off every like eight or nine depending on the skill tree or whatever but let's say it's once every 10 seconds let's say there's no buffs or anything like that okay that means that on average this is going to happen you know at least once every skill cycle if not more often than that and that's a pretty high healing factor to be getting for free because if you consider you know Richard the first he has a 1400 healing factor and of course this only happens once every skill cycle because it is his skill now of course we also have the bonus to healing enhancement over here uh so it's actually a little bit better there but still the healing on Frederick is one of the best heals in the game as far as I'm concerned I mean it's a higher healing factor than Boudicca Prime and it also has a lower cooldown than Boudicca Prime now hers isn't a probability it's guaranteed to happen every skill cycle but I think the healing on Frederick is unironically really really solid the third skill really is where things fall apart okay 10 percent all damage when attacking a city that's a really really too vanilla there's really nothing here you're not really going to attack player cities with frederick unless you're in like pre kvk1 or maybe kvk1 right frederick with maybe mehmed in early game kvk1 possibly but besides that this only works for cities it doesn't work for rallying a a flag or a fort so it kind of sucks the fourth skill is interesting 15% increased troop capacity and I've talked about this on the channel before okay but the number of troops in your army is directly proportionate to how much damage you're going to deal with your active skills with your normal attacks with your counter attacks all damage is basically influenced by how many troops you have so this actually is really nice the downside of this is that you could also you know when you get swarmed down now you have more troops that you can fill your hospital with right and that's historically been a problem for Frederick because he's not very good and one thing you're going to notice about all of his skills here is there's not a single stat point there's not a single stat point on Frederick's kit okay there's no attack there's no defense there's no health there's no buff that gives you stats there's no debuff to the target there's nothing here there's a massive amount of single target damage there's a solid healing factor and you're going to bring more troops to the battlefield and that's pretty much it until oh look at that we actually got our oh my god we got the fiery rage achievement baby there it is dude we're so close to the matadors regalia we're so freaking close i can't believe i still don't have this anyway with the introduction of the relics here in the museum in rise of kingdoms we do see a double relic for Frederick which gives him a whopping 40 percent of troop attack this is universal attack you can put him with any commander in the game and they will get 40 percent attack and he also has a really nice 15 percent skill damage taken reduction that's really good okay most of the commanders in the game deal skill damage so taking 15 percent less of that is nice especially because again there's no stats on Frederick that would make him tanky there's no defense or health and so he's really really squishy but when you consider everything that he's actually doing here he's kind of like a poor man's Sargon okay if we take a look at what Sargon is actually doing you're gonna see 2500 single target damage which with Freddy it's 2400 but it's over three seconds instead of five so I would argue that they're these are basically equivalent if not you might prefer Freddy's to be honest with you now Sargon gives you 10 percent attack 20 percent health and also 10 percent defense so we see 40 percent of stats on Sargon but it's split across 30 percent tanky stats most of it being health which is really good and 10 percent being attack whereas for Frederick he also gets 40 percent of stats but it's all in on attack Sargon has the odd debuff which is exceptionally good and that's why I say that Frederick is kind of the poor man's Sargon because they're kind of doing the same amount of damage but Sargon has more tricks up his sleeve he also has March speed here 15 percent March speed is nice and you have a 10 percent chance of increasing your damage you also have a 10 percent increased damage when attacking troops finally you have a thousand instant proc damage here with a small shield and the expertise says reduces skill damage taken by 15 percent well what did we just say that Frederick's relic does you take 15 percent less skill damage so there's actually a lot of overlap here okay and I think obviously Sargon has more utility and I would prefer a mixture of stats with uh, an emphasis on tanky stats as opposed to all in on attack but Freddy is looking like a really interesting pick 
for Liu Che. But first, let me go over the talent trees for Frederick. And as you can see, my Frederick is only level 40. So I actually don't have his full talent trees unlocked, but he has the exact same talent trees as Mehmed. So I'm going to share with you guys my Mehmed talent build. And this is the talent build that I would use if I were going to do Frederick primary. Now you might be saying Omniarch Fred Frederick primary, like, come on in 2023. Uh, and I hear you. Okay. Again, I nearly, I, I am, I am nauseated right now, even discussing the, the possibility, the probability. Uh, I, I, I'm not recommending this. Okay. Let me just be very clear. I'm not recommending using Freddy as a primary, but, uh, it's actually better than you think it's, it's, I, I know, I know, I know it's a meme. I know we're memeing, but like it, I'm, I'm kind of also not memeing. It's I'm kind of serious. You get the full skill tree. Okay which means you have a nice rage regeneration here. You also grab a buckler shield, which means you reduce the counter attack damage you take by 9%. This is really important because you really are squishy. Okay. You really are. You need as much tank as you can. Buckler shield is nice and it's a pretty cheap grab. You get a little bit of attack along the way, which isn't great, but it is, but it is. You also grab fresh recruits, which gives you even more troops. So 3% additional. Okay. So total, we have 18% more troop capacity with his fourth skill, which is nice. You also grab strategic prowess. It says after using a skill increases troop defense by 20% for two seconds. And of course this is important. You need the defense. I mean, this is like your only source of defense besides Liu Che, of course, hidden wrath gives you six rage every time you are attacked. So if you do get swarmed, at least you have a nice little bit of rage there and healing herbs actually gives you 9% more healing factor. So now your healing factor, instead of it being a thousand is a thousand ninety. So, I mean, that's, that's still pretty good. We talked about how the healing was actually solid and this is even better. Now, of course, along the way in the skill tree, you're going to get burning blood for more rage and heraldic shield here reduces the skill damage you take by 6%, which remember we're already reducing it by 15% because of the relic on Frederick the first. So this is pretty much the only talent tree that I would consider. Um, I understand that Steely soul is good for the damage on Liu Che, but there's really nothing here that I would trade for it. Honestly, it's only 1.5%. I just don't think that there's anything here worth trading for 1.5%. We're running really tight here on talent points. Uh, and I would rather have 3% troops than 1.5% normal attack damage. So that is the talent tree that I would use for a max out Frederick. If you used him as primary, which again is a little bit sketchy. Now let's talk about the best pairing, which is obviously going to be Liu Che. I honestly can't think of another pairing that I would even consider for Frederick at this moment in time, because the thing about Liu Che, okay. First of all, he's really good on his own. Just like as a standalone commander, he can do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to dealing damage in the open field, but also he has nice AOE, five target smite damage, really high damage factor. His March speed is going to be nice. So you slow down the target. You stay connected to them. Okay. You have some March speed here, which you desperately need for Frederick. Okay. Obviously Frederick is super slow, but here you get some, some of that, which is great. You also have 20% skill damage taken reduction. Okay. So let's put this all together. You have 20% here. You have 15% on Frederick's relic. And if you're using Frederick as primary with the skill tree, you have another 3%. So total you have 38% skill damage taken reduction. That's pretty good guys. That's pretty good. The third skill here, it gives you 20% attack when you're fighting, which means total, you have 60% of attack, assuming that you're doing all infantry, which you would, you also have 20% of uh, defense as well. That's kind of the only defense you have. You also have instant prox might damage and you have 10% more normal attack damage, which is great. You also reduce the damage that the target deals by 10%. And the thing that makes this synergy so powerful is the expertise on Liu Che. Now, this is the thing, right? In order for this combo to work, you really need both of them expertise. And that's going to be very few of you watching. Okay. Because most people who are free to play are never going to expertise Frederick. As you know, from the beginning of this video, it took me five years to get him expertise for free. Okay. And of course, Liu Che just came into the game. A lot of players don't have him yet. So expertising both of these commanders is pretty much required if you're going to run them together but above all kings says that you have a 25 percent chance to launch an extra normal attack and we know that with sargon this also happens to be the case but this is true for frederick as well his active skill here is triggered on normal attack damage dealt so let's say that as you're dealing damage normally if you have one normal attack per turn you're dealing 2400 damage over those three turns with this active skill but if even one of those turns 
has an additional proc of this damage factor that means you're bumped up to 3200 damage factor and that's if it only occurs one time in those three seconds and if you guys didn't know there is no cooldown on this expertise shout out to wout gaming i'll try to remember to link his channel down below but he's been really helpful when it comes to me understanding how luja actually works because he instant maxed him on day one and he shared with me this video now please excuse the poor quality it was compressed from discord okay but here you can see that on turn 24 we have the proc luches above all kings that is his expertise skill okay so that's turn 24 the expertise procs now we're on turn 25 and what do you know above all kings procs again turn 26 we're gonna take a look here and let's see what happens we see another proc of above all kings and could he possibly do it could our boy get lucky enough and yes he does four turns in a row he procs above all kings okay so we know for sure that there is no internal cooldown on this skill you can pop this every single turn if you get lucky which is actually crazy you could do this like 10 turns in a row it's crazy crazy good but that means that theoretically if those four procs happened on the same three turns that Barbarossa is active that would be 4,800 single target damage during a single skill cycle now of course it is unlikely that you would ever get that maximum amount so the range here is 2,400 right that would be if you got unlucky and on none of the turns you got the extra normal but if you got really lucky and on all the turns you had extra normal it's basically double damage for this active skill which is crazy now of course on average it's going to end up somewhere in the middle there and i would say it's probably on average going to be about 3000 damage factor like if you were to average it out across an entire fight most likely it's going to be about 3000 damage factor and i didn't actually do the math it could be a little bit more it could be a little bit less but regardless that would be the highest single target damage factor in the game okay and that's why the pairing with frederick and luce actually works really really well but also the second skill look this has a 10 percent chance from normal attacks to do a 1000 healing factor now of course you can't double trigger this in the same turn because there is a five second cooldown but the fact that it basically gives you another chance on any given turn for this to occur if you do get an extra normal attack so this won't trigger significantly more often because of Luce's expertise but it will trigger slightly more often because of his expertise and we already talked about how this healing factor is actually really solid so then I did what we normally do here on the channel and I pulled Luce with Frederick into the rock battle simulator and I did a bunch of different testings okay because again I don't have Luce expertise and I don't think Wout Gaming has Frederick expertise so I actually don't know how to test this right now other than just doing this but I also reached out to Speco who is the developer for the rock battle simulator okay and I kind of shared some thoughts with him about how this might be working and as far as he can tell Luce is actually coded in the simulator exactly as he is working in the game now I already made an entire video about the rock battle simulator and how we kind of came to the conclusion that it's about 90 percent accurate from what you might expect from an actual duel in the game so it's not perfect but it's close and so i ran a bunch of tests okay now all the tests that i ran here were luce primary okay because i didn't actually think to do frederick primary first because i just like you guys i just wrote it off i was like there's no way frederick primary is a thing right so i didn't actually i have a bunch of tests with luce primary frederick primary could actually be better ironically which is funny but the test results here literally shocked me I was blown away by this couple things to note here okay you can see the gear on the screen I did not assume best in slot everything because most of you watching do not have best in slot everything I assume that there was an iconic crystal in every legendary piece here so that means we have three attack points six defense points and nine extra health points okay I also assumed 30 percent bonus attack from kvk technology and 40 percent all damage for being in kvk and then I also assumed all the other standard things that we always do on the channel which is a 10 percent defense buff a 10 percent health rune and for the luce I assumed a five percent health city skin with France as the infantry type and then for the enemy they either had the five percent skill damage from Twilight Falls with a 10 percent health rune or if it were infantry and it made sense I also made them uh France and gave them the the necessary health buff as well so those are the testing parameters here and I just want to go over really quick 
what we found out okay so let's take a look here this is the first battle report against nevsky joan okay um and completely blew them out of the water okay and you're gonna see here that of course there are more troops here with the luce army because you have frederick's fourth skill you would expect that the frederick army would have more troops than the enemy that's what you would do actually in the game right so it makes sense that you would have uh, more troops but it was a complete blowout here was the second uh test absolutely destroyed them third test unbelievable 115,000 remaining which is wild we also see 111,000 remaining here and 100,000 remaining here so you could see that in all five tests the Nevsky Joan lost now one thing that I want to point out here though okay here's the really important part even though there's about 42 percent of the troops remaining okay and you can go through it's basically the same for all of them there's still a lot of sev wounds we have 17,700 sev wounds to their 31,700 now of course this is much higher but I mean they lost way more troops it's something to keep note of as we go through these test results next we did Luce Freddy up against the Huo Nevsky because I thought okay well this is a really good dueling army it's really good in 1v1 okay and in case you were wondering the simulator does take into account the initial buff from Huo okay so if you guys don't know on Huo's third skill it reduces his rage requirement and it gives him a bunch of extra skill damage for the first I think 15 seconds of battle it assumes that every single battle starts in the best possible scenario for Huo okay which isn't always the case but as you can see here um 91,000 remaining 77,000 remaining 42.5 okay so a little bit lower there uh we have 90,000 remaining here and 73 remaining here so it performed better than the Nevsky Joan which you would expect because this is a really good 1v1 pair but you're missing out on the AoE from Joan right so even this Huo Nevsky could not beat Liuche Freddy shocking to me here we did Huo with Minamoto okay just out of curiosity I know Minamoto has a ton of stats and he's good at dueling just curious to see how this would work we have 108,000 remaining here we have 93 remaining here 82 remaining here 98 and 105,000 here next up we did Boudica with Zhuge Liang okay and finally we see the Liu Che Freddy go down okay so they're not unbeatable and you'll also note here that for archers I actually gave them an additional purple because you probably are going to have the revival set bonus it makes the most sense to do that so technically archers have three less base stat points because they're missing an iconic crystal but either way they still performed super well here 25k remaining from the Boudica Zhuge Liang the next report was 32,000 remaining uh 35,000 remaining and we see 13,000 remaining so in every single instance the Boudica with Zhuge Liang actually won even though it had fewer troops right and it still had a pretty low amount of troops remaining next I tried to Boudica with Henry because again that's a pretty good dueling combination here we see 77k remaining for the Boudica army we see 30k remaining here we see an actual win from Lute Freddy okay uh, which just goes to show that there's like a lot of randomness with this um you could get a lot of extra normal attacks you could get no extra normal attacks right it really depends uh and which turns do those land on matters a lot with Freddy okay like I said it literally could double the damage of his active skill if you get really lucky so here we see it's basically a tie okay but technically it's a it's a win for Liu Che but they have more sev wounds that's the part that like for me like is it really a win is it really a win they have more sev wounds and that's because they brought more troops and they also healed okay so yeah lots of interesting stuff happening here the next report they have 10,000 remaining here and the final report we see 20,000 remaining so four out of the five reports the Boudica Henry actually won but I actually think the Boudica Zhuge Liang performed better if I'm not mistaken either way um shocking stuff here okay so we know archers can still take this down which makes sense Boudica typically performs really well in 1v1s next I did a test against Guan CPO we have a hundred and three thousand remaining for the Liu J Frederick what the hell a hundred thousand seventy six seventy six and a hundred and three so they beat Guan CPO by a mile every single time here we see Luce Sargon okay and this was where I was I was really interested in this because like I said before Freddy is kind of like a poor man Sargon that's how I look at him now these days if you have him expertise by the way like that's a big deal but literally everything was identical on both sides here okay you can see that they are both the same civilization they have the exact same talent trees you can't see that because my head's in the way but they have the exact same talent trees the exact same equipment everything is identical here they're both using the same primary commander and you can see for the first fight 
the Sargon actually wins 43,000 remaining for the second fight we see the Frederick wins 42k remaining for the third we see 18k remaining for the Freddy for the fourth we see 20k remaining for the Freddy and for the fifth we see 26k remaining for the Freddy now again here's the thing though right we see the Frederick wins are four out of five but they have the same amount of sev wounds basically right like in this case like they're almost the same uh moving forward here we we actually see more sev wounds on the winning side than on the losing side here we see the same thing right so it really depends on how do you classify a win like uh who has units remaining the Lute Freddy but who took more troops to the hospital also the Lute Freddy, right like that's kind of funny to think about even still these were surprising results for me next I did a test with Scipio uh Luce and we did also the France civilization here as well uh you could see the talent build down here uh we see that the Scipio Luce actually loses almost 70k remaining here we have 17k remaining here we see the Scipio Luce actually wins with 18k remaining they won a second time with 19.9k remaining and finally we see the Luce Freddy wins again so we have three out of five goes to the uh Luce Freddy in terms of winning but uh yeah even this the sev wounds for both sides are, are really funny regardless I did two more tests I wanted to go up against Richard Martel because typically Richard Martel is really good at duels there's a ton of healing there's a ton of shielding it's just a slow burn okay awful get when getting swarmed but really good at 1v1s and they get absolutely destroyed bro they get freaking demolished look at this 154k remaining 155k remaining like this is 144k 155 and 150 a shocking loss for Richard Martel and I've talked on the channel before a lot about how Richard and Martel typically perform well in 1v1s because of the healing and shielding and here they just get melted they just get melted it's actually kind of crazy and I'm trying to figure out like what did I do wrong did I do something wrong to make this outcome occur I think because a lot of the damage happens over time from Luce Freddy so I mean maybe that's it I really I don't know and finally I did the Martel Pyrus because if you guys remember when Pyrus was first announced the Martel Pyrus performed really well against pretty much everything and here you could see that they get absolutely demolished in every single test okay no matter what uh the shielding factor is just not holding up here against the Lute Freddy it just breaks through it which is wild to me I have I can't explain that it is it is super good so what does this mean well first of all we know that the sim isn't 100 accurate and 1v1 duels aren't the best way to gauge whether a commander is good or not okay this is a perfect scenario they're in a vacuum there's no they're not taking AOE damage they're not being swarmed there's no debuffs from enemies right like there's so many other factors that this vacuum test does not take into account so I want to make it very clear that I am not telling you to run Frederick with Luce I'm not saying this is meta I'm not saying you should invest in Freddy I'm not saying that this is the next best thing but what I am saying is that there is some truth to what happens in the simulator I mean the simulator uses the same data as the game like it's literally a math formula so you could argue about a bunch of other things but math is math like math is literally just numbers you put it no matter how you calculate it whether it's calculated uh, on your phone on the back end of the ROK application or if you calculate it in a spreadsheet or if you calculate it here using uh, basically a custom unity engine that's running the scripts in the back end uh it's it's all math right so there's something here there's something here it's it's not perfect but there's something here and I am really interested to see you know as we get more people expertise in Luce I'm really interested to see you know can people make the Freddy combo work right because remember if you do the Freddy primary which I'll have to show you again with my Mehmed but you get even more troops with fresh recruits and you get a faster rage engine with the skill tree I think it it could actually be something people try out okay it's not going to be meta it's not going to be one of your seven armies that you run in the open field okay but like if you've got nothing else and you want to keep your Guan Scipio okay and for some reason you want to run a second infantry army and you have Freddy expertise you could possibly try it you could save the sculptures from your Sargon you could possibly 
try it okay now i will again warn you uh this that you could fill your hospital really quickly here you saw the sev wounds on both sides even when freddy won sometimes he would have the same or more sev wounds okay so be warned but this could be a fun little trick you could throw out your freddy to troll people they would expect it to be awful and then your loot jay behind him is just pumping out damage like a demon it could be the case it could be the case who knows but regardless 1823 days later i finally have myself an expertise frederick and for the first time in those five years there might actually be a c or b tier pairing option for him possibly maybe and even the fact that it's in the realm of possibility is shocking and hilarious and kind of about time anyway guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it comment your thoughts down below about frederick the first in 2023 do you think it makes sense to wait five years to expertise the legendary i think that's too long i think lilith needs to increase the speed with which we gain the gold key commanders because they're not that great anyway i don't think it should take anyone more than two or two and a half years to expertise a gold key commander free to play that's what i think i think even that's a long time right but at least you can grind your way there and be rewarded for it five years to me too crazy too long with that being said comment your thoughts down below about freddy with luce do you think it's gimmicky do you think it's not really going to perform well in the open field or do you think that there's enough synergy there with the extra normal attacks to really do something in the open field let me know what you think down below while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i either upload a rise of kingdoms video or go live with rise of kingdoms and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace